Perfection of Wisdom, Mother of Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, and all beings, nourishing, holding, and healing all, Great Mother Earth, precious jewel of the cosmos, to you we bow in gratitude. We take refuge in the earth as our teacher, the one who shows us the way in this life. We take refuge in the earth as an expression of the Dharma, the teachings of interbeing, understanding, and love. We take refuge in the earth as an embodiment of the Sangha, the vast, interdependent community of life in balance and harmony. Living within the web of life on earth, we dedicate ourselves to embodying awakened awareness on the path of healing in service to all beings. We dedicate our lives to realizing our oneness with Gaia. The four thoughts that turn the mind to the Dharma. This precious human form is difficult to obtain and embodies opportunities and resources. Give us the energy to realize its potential. It is uncertain when death and impermanence will strike. Give us the energy to live a life of no regret. The laws of the way things are work internally. Give us the energy to live without shame. Suffering is present in all six realms. Give us the energy not to take birth in these states. The reliable and definite refuges are the three jewels. Give us the energy to trust them. The six kinds of beings are as kind as our parents. Give us the energy for loving kindness and compassion. In the end, our mind is nothing but being as truth. Give us the energy to attain a stable understanding. So today I'm going to tie in the four immeasurables with disrupting reactive patterns. <laughs> and I have um, long contemplated the phrase from our opening verses, this precious human form is difficult to obtain and embodies opportunities and resources. Give me the energy to realize its potential. And I've asked to know what is my body's potential? And I realize that new potentials are activated with shifts in consciousness. And that my spiritual practice actually tunes my form to embody um, greater potentials. And recently it came to me that the four immeasurables are potentials which can be activated in the body, that we can embody these states which elevate life, anchoring loving kindness, compassion, equanimity, and joy 
into reality. And I have watched how the four immeasurables naturally mature within me as I learn to discern and work with my reactivity. So to begin to disarm reactivity, um, we must first listen to what it is saying and become conscious of the direction it wants to take us in. I have discovered many forms of violence hidden in my reactive responses, and they run the full spectrum from murder to wanting to save other people by worrying about them and attempting to micromanage their lives. And recently, I was experiencing um, mistrust of another person. And as I explored this reaction, I was surprised to find my mistrust engendered a desire to be mean to this person, which I knew I didn't want to manifest. But without awareness, this meanness would have been acted out through passive aggression. And many layers of conditioning and unprocessed trauma form our reactive responses. And these responses are formations that are passed down through generations in one family. And some are societal formations acted out on school playgrounds and classrooms, on social media, and in the dramas that we watch. And we are surrounded by abundant reinforcement and justification for sourcing thoughts, words, and deeds from reactivity. Pursuing mindful practice um, allows us to be able to disarm and open our hearts to respond from care. Rather than from defensiveness, anger, or the impulse to get even. This level of work is transformative not only for ourselves, but also for the collective. And I'm finding it is an effective way to liberate ourselves from being complicit with oppressive systems. Bringing conscious awareness to our reactivity makes it easier and easier for us to read the signs when reactivity is taking hold, because I find it's very unconscious and habitual. So we have to become aware of it. Um, and I've begun to see how reactivity strengthens my sense of separate self, how it justifies self-centeredness, how it fuels greed and blame and generates polarization, aggression, and defensiveness. In short, reactivity unconsciously perpetuates the very suffering that we long to end. Because its thinking nourishes the seeds of poison we carry as human beings. And whenever I take the time to, to actually feel and acknowledge the divisive energies, my reactivity, of my reactivity, um, there's a critical choice point that arises. I can either identify with the reactivity and follow its volition, or I can clearly choose another path. As an example, I can choose to open my heart rather than shutting it down. I can see that the shadow playing out through others also resides in me. And this leads to a compassionate response rather than withholding from others. Conscious awareness of what is embedded in our reactive responses allows us to claim the source of our volition. To gain insight into and deactivate the volition of reactive responses, I find that I 
first need to give expression to the reactivity in order to hear and feel what it is saying. And I do this in a safe space with no one present who will collude with or reinforce the point of view of my reactivity. As disarming reactivity is about gaining insight and not about taking sides or gaining sympathy. And as reactivity draws life force from very deep-seated emotions like anger, grief, frustration, hopelessness, desperation, I find it is necessary to touch in and release a layer of the driving emotion. And what I find is that in the midst of emotional release, relevant and insightful information starts to reveal itself to me, offering options which nourish and mature the seeds of loving kindness, compassion, equanimity, and joy. And so I'll just end this little talk by saying, in similar to the Bodhisattva vow, I find that react, reactive patterns are numberless. <laughs> there are so many of them and we all carry them and that I don't know what the vow would be but it, for me it would be something like I vow to treat them with compassion and understanding and loving kindness because it's not about becoming judgmental um, that we carry these and I think the only way to undo them is through this path of the four immeasurables. A river of certainties. Walking out of the mirror, a flickering reflection. Follow the messages that beat in your blood. Above cottonwoods waving incandescent green, the sky opens, receiving you into a river of certainties, deeper than the mind. In the house of your eye, every glance feeds many. Energy creates family trees. Singing, dancing branches for colorful birds to nest. Going in and out of the house of the eye, you farm, form mountains, canyons, waterfalls, stars, and moons. You populate deserts with fur, feathers, scales, and howls. You cultivate fields of flowers and fruit. No longer inside the mirror, you share feasts and laughter under shady boughs in the valley as it was when the earth was whole.